Welcome to Harmony and Improvisation with Dub Pierce, a podcast dedicated to helping musicians of all levels to play better music. Join us in these upcoming episodes as we explore the ins and outs of major diatonic harmony. Visit us at HarmonyImprov.com. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Subscribe on YouTube and your favorite podcast platform. Partner with us at Patreon.com backslash Harmony Improv. Welcome once again to Harmony and Improvisation. Thanks for joining us. All right. Well... I just want to um, welcome you to uh, the first episode or the first podcast of my uh, vidcast podcast um, called Harmony and Improvisation and wanted to, uh, you know, just welcome you to it and thank you for being here. Uh, thank you for having an interest. Um, <clears throat> I'd be, I'll be doing this on both uh, podcast uh, platforms as well as on YouTube. And, um, the, you know, the thing I have to keep in mind is that on YouTube, you can see the graphics that I'm talking about, but those of you who are listening via podcast, you're, you're not going to see those things. So I have to explain what I'm doing here. What you're seeing right now is a graphic with, um, uh, the very first information that I'm going to share in this podcast is, uh, as well as me sitting here with a very orange guitar. Um, uh, why am I doing this? Uh, I think mostly because um, my kids and wife have been encouraging me to do it for years. Uh, also because um, I I just love this subject. I love talking about it. I love discussing it with other musicians. Um, I love learning from other people. Um, and I've, I've learned tons from other people over the last several decades as I've focused on this subject in my own musicianship and composition and playing. And I've been uh, lucky enough to have quite a few people, you know, come across my path that have um, kind of turned me different directions in, in learning how to think about harmony, how to think about scales and chords and arpeggios and intervals and things like that, and how to then turn that into something that makes my musicianship better. Um, the people, I guess I should mention a few people anyway. John Schofield did a, a video in the mid 80s called Improvisation. I think it was just called Improvisation where it was like a workshop uh, that he shared his um, his knowledge at that point in time. I think about this. This was 30 some odd years ago. Um, the guy's uh, just such an incredible musician and an incredible uh, analyzer of the way that music works. I learned a lot from him. Uh, now, again, a lot of you'll say, John Schofield, who's that? Or, oh, I don't like his playing or whatever. But that's not the point. The point is, is that he looks at um, harmony and improvisation from a, a, a almost linguistic uh, approach, a language. And um, that's what I've adapted I, or adopt, adopted my thinking to <clears throat> is um, understanding uh, that music really is a language. It's a language that's audible and that you can converse with other musicians on a lot of different levels, which is another reason why I'm doing this. Um, I, I hear a lot of different opinions, everything from, oh, you know, theory and understanding uh, decibels and sine waves and stuff is the most important thing in the world. You know, I don't really go that far with it. I also don't believe that what a lot of people say, which is you don't need to know anything about music, just learn how to hear things and and play what you like. That's another end of the spectrum uh, that I don't agree with. I've, I've found that in my own playing, and this is what I hope to encourage other people to, um, to take in, I've found that in my own playing, understanding the language of music, understanding the way it works grammatically and vocabulary and things like that really broadens your horizons. Um, and, and it's irrespective of genre. It doesn't matter if you're a country player, bluegrass player, strict classical school musician, um, jazzer, uh, pop player, whatever. It doesn't blues. It doesn't, um, the things that I teach are basic linguistic skills that will help you be better in all those areas. Um, forgive me for the thing in my throat. I'm just getting over the 2020 flu virus. <laughs> so I'm going to be a little scratchy. <clears throat> forgive me for that. Also, forgive me, I'm getting old and I run into words sometimes that just bring me to a screeching halt. And you'll hear me, there'll be big pauses in what I'll say occasionally. Just know that it's my brain trying to catch up. Um, 
So also a good friend, uh, Buddy Nuan, as a guitar player, local Los Angeles guitar player, really helped me. He gave me one of my first kind of uh, redirects in terms of how to think about um, diatonic harmony and modes. Um, great players like Steve Kujala, flautist, has always been an inspiration for me, just hearing his playing with Chick Corea and people like that, and his chairs in the LA Phil. It's, um, you know, being, being able to be around great musicians really has uh, taught me a lot. Um, the people that I hope benefit from this are, um, number one, students, people who are teaching themselves how to understand music and play their instrument. Oh, by the way, this is, again, irrespective of in instrument, vocalists, string players, pianists, horn players, anybody can, can uh, grow and learn from the things that I'm going to share. And I intend to start off at the most basic level, which you can see in my uh, graphics here, here, that <laughs> there are Everything's backwards. Um, but that we're going to start at a very basic level that anybody, even the most beginning student on any instrument, can, uh, can understand. <clears throat> but the idea is we start off very, very simply and then build into more complex and more complex ideas. And if you follow from the simple to the complex, it's really not hard. If you start trying to understand complex ideas without understanding it from a simple, again, think of it as language, you know, first grade reading and writing. Uh, everybody learns to read and write, or most people do. And that helps them to be able to, you know, read things they like or read things that they need to read down the line. Uh, why, why do I not focus on musical notes in this? I'm not going to. I'm going to do, I'm going to have an alphanumeric approach. I'm going to teach from two points of view. And that is because I think the skill of reading is something that you learn if you need to read for a living or if you need to read for a hobby or uh, you, um, you don't need to be a great note reader to be a great improviser. I'm not knocking reading. I think it's one of the greatest things a musician can learn how to do. It opens your world to all kinds of things that are very important. But um, m the way I teach is alphanumeric. It's just, you can, you can learn it all in your head and have it all right here. So it's part of your linguistic skill. Um, alphanumeric, what does that mean? I'm, I'm going to teach you how to think of things in the alpha part, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, those basic notes and their sharp and flat iterations. Um, and then numeric as well. Um, some of the numbers will relate to the alpha part. So for instance, if I say an, an A7 chord, you will know what that means and what notes are contained in that. But also the numeric part of that is if I say a C7 chord, or just forget seven, a C triad, you will know that a C major scale, which if you want to look at this um, graphic that I've got going here, you'll notice the black notes are um, non-sharp, non-flat notes. We'll get into this in a second. But the C, D, E, F, G, A, B, that's a C major scale. C major scale is a seven note note set that determines the sound of C major. Um, you will also, the, out, the numeric part of that is you will also learn that C, D, E, F, G, A, B are the seven note names in that. But if you think of them as uh, tones, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, they are the first through the seventh tone of that C major note set. And you'll learn that a C major triad, which is the one, three, and five, C, D, E, F, G, C, E, G, is the sound of a major triad. Um, that one, three, and five carries through every key that you're going to learn, which we're going to learn all, as many keys as make sense. Um, <clears throat> so, oh, in the key of A major, one, three, and five of that note set equals a major triad, an A major triad. Uh, in the key of C major, the one, three, and five equals a C major triad. Okay, that's, so that's basically the two methods that I'm going to use. Um, uh, and yeah, we could just get started. Let's get started with the very first and most basic thing that I know how to teach, which is there are only 12 different notes. You'll see in, my, um, in the 
the graphic here that these 12 notes are broken up into two different sets. Um, just as a side, for pianists or people who know what a keyboard looks like, you notice that the black notes, C, D, E, F, G, and A and B, those are the white notes on a keyboard. They're called naturals. They also determine a C major scale, the one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven of a C major scale. The blue notes in between with the red arrows pointing down, those are the other five notes. There are only seven plus five, 12 different notes seven natural notes, and five sharp or flats. And you notice there's a ter term there, enharmonic. Enharmonic means, for instance, that the C sharp that you see right next to the C is also a D flat. The sound is the same as a D flat. But they're enharmonically sometimes in keys, keys being the way that we spell seven note, note sets that are major scales. A key equals those seven notes that are the note set that equals a major scale. You'll understand that more as we move through. Um, that those, those notes are used either as flats or as sharps, depending on the key name of the note set that you're determining. Okay, maybe that's, maybe I went too far there. Anyway, you'll get it. Um, uh, the, the 12 notes that you see in front of you cover the distance of an octave from C to C. Um, you'll see that we've got um, C. Uh, oh, by the way, this is the way that I'm going to go about doing this for, for all the keys. We're going to do some rote memorization over the next few podcasts, and you're going to learn a bunch of keys. Um, but the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to say a note, C, play it. And when I do that, you should, if you're a singer or a player, you should hum it, whistle it, sing it, say it, and and understand what that tone is. If you have your instrument with you, play it. C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F. Ah, the first question comes up. Why is there no E sharp between F? Uh, you'll notice on a, on a keyboard that the same thing carries. The E and the F are right next to one another and the C sharp, D sharp, F sharp are black notes, G sharp, A sharp as well. <clears throat> the F, the E to F, the distance or the interval between them is a half step or a semitone. Uh, the way music works and just take it by, there is an E sharp and it is an F, but we never use it in that we rarely use it in that E-sharp terminology. We usually call it an F. There are places where we call it an E-sharp, so we're going to break our own rules. So you've got, we're going to go back to C, C, C-sharp, D, D-sharp, E, F, or E-sharp, F-sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, and C. The distance between those two notes is an octave. And you'll notice that, that interval, it's called an octave. Those two notes are the same. They're just an octave apart. Let's go back down. Let's start on the bottom uh, list of notes and start with the C to the far right. And we'll go C. B, B flat, A, A flat, G, G flat, F, E, E flat, D, D flat and C. And you'll notice that uh, if you go to the far right on both lines, you've got B and C. The B and C is also one half step apart or they're white keys right next to one another on a piano. The E and the F and the B and the C are one half step apart and white keys on a piano. All the other notes, there is a, there, each note is a half step apart 
from the one next to it. C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, C. Each one of those is a half step apart from one another. You can tell for guitar players. Those are all one half step interval called a half step or a semitone away from one another. That's all there is, you guys. That's all there is in music. From this lesson take away, the black notes that you see in this graphic are all uh, natural notes. And the blue notes are sharps or flats of the same tones, C sharp, D flat, D sharp, E flat, F sharp, G flat, G sharp, A flat, A sharp, B flat. Each set of those two notes are the same tone, yet called a different thing depending on the note set or the key that you're describing. Um, that's really all I wanted to cover today, but just to let you know that I'm very, very happy to be doing this. It's, uh, this is my first one, so it's kind of like I'm, I'm trying to just figure out how I'm going to go about doing it. But I want you to know that um, for both the podcast listeners and the vidcast listeners, I'm going to try to uh, repeat things in the next several ep uh, episodes or podcasts or vidcasts that will help you to drill and have, you know, 15 keys at your disposal very, very quickly. Here's something I do when I teach this class in front of other people. I can teach you three keys in um, a minute. The key is C, <clears throat> is all natural notes. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Now, you would think, oh, well, okay, that's great, but what does that teach me? Well, if all the notes in the note set or key of C major are natural, then how do you, what do you think the key of C sharp major is? Answer, all sharps, seven sharps. C sharp D sharp, E sharp. Ooh, there's that E sharp I, I told you about. That's actually an F note, but in the key of C sharp, it's C sharp, C sharp, D sharp, E sharp, F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, B sharp, B sharp. Where did that come from? The B to C. Oh, that B sharp is actually a C note, but in the key of C sharp major, it's a B sharp to C. You notice how that sounds very much, very similar to that C major, C sharp major. Now, let's do C flat. There's a C, let's go down a half step. That's a C flat or a B, right? C flat, B flat, E flat, F flat, G flat, A flat, B flat, C flat. Those are the inharmonic spelling notes that are a half step below C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Now, it just makes sense that you understand that that C down to the C flat, that is actually a B. So we're actually in the same sound note set as B major but we're just calling it C-flat major. And there are reasons for doing this, which we'll get to later. C-flat major. C major. C-sharp major. Seven sharps. No sharps, no flats. Seven flats. Okay. So uh, we'll leave it at that for today. Uh, thank you again for listening through. I hope you join me. Um, I really think, uh, all I can say is that um, the things that I'm getting ready to teach, I've taught to a lot of people, including people who've graduated music school and college. And I, to a person, every single person, I think would admit that it's helped them in, in some way or another. This, the way that I'm gonna teach this has helped me in just immense ways over the years. In understanding harmony, composition and improvisation. And the last note, improvisation is just real-time composition. You're composing on the fly. That's why for me, improvisation is so much fun. 
All right, we'll leave it at that. Thank you again. Uh, We'll see you next time.